Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some neighbor romance recommendations. This is the second video that I have made where neighbors end up falling in love with each other so I will be sure to link my first video down below. I made that one like I want to say three years ago so if you want more recommendations, you can go check that video out. So let's talk about neighbors falling in love with each other. These can get really, really fun. And I didn't realize until recently that I actually really love the neighbors romance trope. Like, I think it is so fun. So the first one for me, which is one of my favorites, is A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. Ruth is our heroine in here, and she very much loves to be in her apartment. She is not someone who likes to go out and socialize. She loves to work her remote job being a graphic designer at home with all of her comic books. Ruth is also autistic, so I love that representation in here. One day she ends up getting a new neighbor. His name is Evan and he is very much the opposite of Ruth. He loves talking to people. He's very much a people person. He's very confident in himself and he's very bubbly. And Ruth is kind of the opposite of that and she knows that and she kind of is irritated with Evan and how persistent he is into getting to know her because she's just like, this man is too happy. What is wrong with him? He is too happy. But then Evan one time comes to her doorstep with food that he's made. He loves cooking and he strikes up a deal with Ruth because he knows that she's just eating takeout all day, every day. He's like, that can't be healthy for you. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cook you these amazing, wonderful meals. And I really wanna get to know you and exchange like, can I read some of the comic books you have? And she is more than willing to talk about comic books with him. Like that is like her main hobby in life and she loves it so much. And I love how you get to see Ruth's personality really shine when she talks about comic books. Ruth does have a guard up, but it's because of her past, especially with men. And so Evan is trying to help her realize that not all men are like the man who hurt her in the past, um, even though there are some bad men. Um, he is different and he is falling in love with her. And oh, this neighbor's romance is so cute and so sweet. And I cannot get enough of Ruth and Evan. I really wanna do a reread right now for this book because I think it's everything. I love Ruth, I love Evan so much, and oh, I can't get enough of them. Next is Twisted Love by Anna Huang. Um, so our heroine here, Ava, her brother actually lives next door to her and her roommates, they own a house together, or rent a house. And her brother is like, owns the house next door to them. Um, but he is going overseas. He's a doctor, I'm pretty sure, I think. And he's going overseas to do something um, with being a doctor. <laughs> and so he asks his best friend to kind of watch over Ava while she's in school, she's in college, and just like make sure she's okay. Like keep an eye out on her. So um, he might take it to a little bit of the extreme when he decides to move into his friend's house, therefore living next door to Ava to keep an eye on her. And the tension between the two of them are off the charts. Ava's very much like the bubbly, sunshiny person and she really wants to just see this man crack and smile for once. He's very grumpy and very stoic. So she she's trying her best to do that. But while he's trying to protect her and look after her at in certain instances, she's very fed up with him because she doesn't think she needs a babysitter. She's 22. But anyway, throughout the process of him watching over her, like the two of them end up falling in love with each other, even though they shouldn't because that is her brother's best friend. It gets a little bit dramatic and uh, there may or may not be scenes where she like goes over to his house in the middle of the night because it's right there. Art and Soul by Brittany Cherry is my next one. Now this one leans more towards the new adult YA range, but the romance in here is absolutely beautiful. It's Brittany Cherry. You're going to get a beautiful book. Ari, I believe, is a junior in high school, possibly sophomore. I can't remember. She's in a little bit of a predicament because she just found out she's pregnant. Um, and the guy that she was with kind of betrayed her trust in certain aspects, and she doesn't know what to do. She has a very perfect home life. And when the news comes out, her home life kind of crashes and burns. Um, and her solace in this whole situation is her new neighbor across the street, Levi. He just moved from a different state to come live with his dad who he hasn't seen in a very long time. He just needed a new change of scenery with his life. And he thought living with his dad for a bit 
would be that good thing for him, even though he and his dad do not have the best relationship and his book is also about him trying to form that relationship with his father. Arya and Levi end up becoming very close friends and it turns into something more. They are so sweet and cute and caring and loving towards one another. And I love the scenes where they do sneak out and, and hang out together just to hang out. Like they just want to talk to this person for the rest of their life. Like this person is their person and they know that. Next I have Neighbor Dearest by Penelope Ward. This one starts out pretty funny. <laughs> so our heroine in here, her name is Chelsea. This is the romance between Chelsea and Damien. So Chelsea in here is next door neighbors to Damien in their apartment complex. And the walls are pretty thin. And um, one day Chelsea is on a Zoom video call with her therapist talking about a very embarrassing situation. The walls are so thin that she can hear her neighbor who shares a wall with her snickering while she's telling this therapist about this very embarrassing, funny situation, but it's very embarrassing. And then she realizes that this man can hear her through the wall and she's mortified. So the two of them don't get off on the best start <laughs> because of that. Um, and also like his dogs are barking all day long. And so she goes to get in front about the dogs and the dogs kind of like tackle her and she might get a little bit hurt so like this book is very funny at moments it has those moments of hilarity but there are some serious moments in here anyway so they do not start out on the right foot but then they slowly start becoming like each other's best friends this is very much a i don't like you to friends to lovers romance but damien and chelsea in here their relationship i really like seeing the progression of that um, because you don't see that a lot in romance books. In a lot of romance books, like you hit it off or it's more so enemies to lovers where like this one is, I'm not really that big of a fan of you. You annoy me to, oh, you're like my best friend to lovers. It was such a good read. Next, I have The Bombshell Effect by Carla Sorensen. This is the first book in her Washington Wolves series. So this is like a football romance series. Our heroine in here, her father, who she's kind of been estranged from for a while, just recently passed. And in his will, he left her a football team. Like he owned the Washington Wolves football team. She's now the new owner of it. So she ends up also inheriting like a certain house also in the area. And she really wants to befriend her next door neighbor. She realizes that her next door neighbor has like a little girl living there and decides to go and give them a peace offering by baking them cupcakes and bring the cupcakes to them. Where our hero in here is actually on the Washington Wolves football team. They haven't met yet because she has not gone to her first day on the job yet. And so when he opens the door and sees this girl there with cupcakes, like this woman there with cupcakes who's beautiful, he thinks that she's like some groupie wanting to like get with him and stalk him or something. And so basically like slams the door in her face and she is very offended. So they are both shocked when they show up at work the next day and are like, oh, you're this person? Oh, you're this person. Like, mm. <laughs> There's a lot more going on in here, but I love the neighbor part in here because the guy is a single dad and his daughter just like wants to go over to the neighbor's house so often because like she thinks she's like Barbie or a princess or something. Like she loves her. And there's like tension heavy like deck and pool scenes like that have longing looks. So next I have Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. This one's interesting when it comes to the neighbor part because they're not neighbors when it comes to where they live, they're neighbors in businesses. So our heroine in here, her name is Blair and the hero's name is Ronan, right? Blair and Ronan. So Blair owns this cupcake cocktail shop that's recently opening, um, about to open. And she's not very happy when the bar next door to her cupcake shop um, is getting remodeled to be like an ax throwing bar now. And the ax throwing, like the wall that has the targets on it is right up against her shop. And sometimes the wall shakes and it's broken a few of her glasses and she's not very happy. So she goes to confront the guy who's remodeling the bar and like, they do not hit it off. This is very much like animosity, don't like you to lovers romance. They like compete with each other's businesses and it kind of like turns them on to do that. Like they cannot get enough of competing with this person. Um, but then they start falling in love with each other and each other's businesses because at first they just like don't like the other person's business. She's like ax throwing in a bar with sports. Like, ugh, don't like that. And then he's just like cupcakes with cocktails. Like that seems too girly for me. But then he goes in and tries her cupcakes. Literally has like a foodgasm every time he eats one of the cupcakes. Like he is in awe of this baker, like this woman. The two of them end up falling in love with each other and their businesses, like I just said. And 
I loved it. They play little like pranks on each other and jokes on each other um, and trying to like ruin each other's businesses, but not actually. This book left me laughing out loud so often. I thought it was a great book and it is unique because it's not like neighbors romance and the fact that they're living next to each other, but they're neighbors in each other's with each other's businesses. Next is an oldie for me. This is Wait For You by Jay Lynn, who just so happens to be Jennifer L. Armentrout. So Jennifer L. Armentrout has written like this whole series, the Wait For You series, like filled with uh, new adult characters. This one's about Avery and Cameron. Both of them attend the same college and she just so happens to live across the hall from him at her new apartment when she moves to this new college. Cameron just so happens to be like the, the school soccer star at the college. Um, but I think he's taking like a break this semester. I can't remember why. The moment that Cameron sees Avery, like he is all for getting to know her and pursuing her. Um, but she has past trauma and some things that have happened to her in her past that she's not ready for relationship. She's not ready to get to know a guy, but Cameron just like full on falls in love with her and wants Avery to be his in like a respectful way but he loves to poke at her and banter with her he just loves talking to her and he'll make any excuse to like get Avery out of her apartment <laughs> and this one is an oldie like this one when was this one written I think like 2013 yeah 2013 I was right on the money look at me um so this one's pretty old so it has like a little bit of a cheese factor to it but I think it's like one of my most nostalgic iconic romance books. Next I have Hide Your Heart by Tracy Alvarez. This is more of an underrated read for sure. So we're here near Alexandra. She was a famous model in America, um, but she recently escaped and moved to New Zealand with her son to flee an abusive relationship. I believe she like faked her own death or ran away because like she's terrified of her husband. Um, and she bought this house, I think on the ocean and just wants to be reclusive for the rest of her life, not entirely because she wants to make sure her son has an amazing life, um, but she just wants to make sure nobody recognizes her because she changes her name, she changes her appearance because she does not want her husband to find her. So she's kind of upset and really frustrated when the house next door to hers in New Zealand, like where she's moved to, immediately gets bought by someone who's a famous photographer and he wants the house to become kind of like a famous staycation home for celebrities so he can like take photos and do video stuff there or something like that and so she is so upset because she spent all this time and energy to make sure her and her son were going to be safe across the world from her abusive husband and this man comes and just ruins it all and she thinks that like she'll be found. So she does not get off on the right foot with him. He doesn't even know who she is, does not recognize her at all. Um, and so she's having to keep her identity a secret, but through her bantering with him and getting very frustrated at him, um, they end up falling for each other very reluctantly. So this one's very underrated, but it is one that I really recommend. Next I have A Tale As Old As Time. This one's by Ellie Hay and it's narrated by Teresa Plummer. This is an Audible original audiobook. It's a little novella that you can read on Audible. Listen to it. It's fairly short. If you love romance books with pets in them, you totally need to check this one out. So our heroine in here, her name is Alana and she recently adopted a cat and her and her cat are so frustrated with the next door neighbor because his dog keeps barking and scaring her cat like through the wall like she, the cat can hear it and scaring her cat and she's so mad and so I think one day she even like puts a post note on his door like take care of your dog or do something about the dog, like something, but do something about the dog. And so that starts their post-it note bicker battle where they put post-it notes on each other's door to like bicker with each other. It's iconic until one day, um, she hasn't met this person by the way, has not met this person, don't know who this person is. Um, but one day both of the pets get out and the two of them, she meets him and the two of them have to work together to track down both of their pets um, throughout the big city. I think it's in New York. I don't know where it is, but it's a bigger city. And so they're trying to like work together to track down their pets in the city. So um, it's really cute and really sweet. And I love the banter in this one. The last one that I have is a historical and I'll just quickly mention it because I've talked about this book in a lot of my rec videos recently. So it's probably getting kind of redundant, but How to Entice an Enchantress is a neighbor's romance. Holly has a heroine and her family owns the house next door to Lord Kirk's house and the two of them become friends and chat about books and things they're passionate about but when he proposes to her um, because he thinks that she'll just be an amazing companion in life because they have a lot of the same interests um, she's very offended by some of the things he says and um, hasn't talked to him in quite a while so he goes to her 
godmother's house and is like, who's a duchess? And it's like, I'll do anything for you to figure out how to get this woman to marry me. Cause I feel like she'd be a great wife. So I need a wife. The duchess in here works on a house party and Dolly is invited and Lord Kirk and her have to spend time at this house party together. And Lord Kirk has to grovel his butt off the entire book to try and convince Dahlia to marry him. I really enjoyed this one. If you want a grumpy, grumpy, grumpy hero falling for a sunshiny woman, you totally need to pick this one up. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 romance books with the neighbors trope. So let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you have any recommendations for me, I would love to know what they are. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a house emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.